everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a favorites video. I have a bunch of products that I've been trying out over the last few months. I have skincare, makeup, hair care, fashion, even some books and snacks recommendations. So um, we have a little bit of everything in this video. All of these products are tried and true and if they aren't I'm going to tell you why I don't think they're quite worth the money but they're still maybe a good product. Um, if you have a specific, you know, situation like acne or, you know, whatever. So I'll be giving a very real and unbiased opinion as always. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First up, I want to talk about skincare. I have discovered um, a facial cleanser that has literally changed my life. I love this product so much. And that's the Tula The Cult Classic Purifying Facial Cleanser. I was really intrigued about Tula for some time because a lot of influencers promote it on YouTube or Instagram, but I had never tried anything for myself because it is a steeper price point. Um, but Alta had last year the free birthday gift with a little mini sample of this, and I really, really liked it. So I decided to invest in the full-size bottle, and I have to say it's really changed my skin. My skin is like clearer than it's ever been before. Um, of course, I am wearing makeup today. I do have a little bit of acne scarring on my chin still. Um, and, you know, the occasional pimple. I'm not going to lie and say this, like, totally fixed my skin forever and ever. But it's made a big difference in my skin. And I just love it. It's very clarifying. It's very good if you have oily skin. It's very gentle. And it's also made with turmeric, which is another thing I don't have right here. But I have been taking ginger and turmeric shots occasionally. Um, I was inspired by Danielle Carolyn to try it out, and that has also been really clearing my acne. I think it's just really reducing the inflammation that maybe has been building up over years and years, um, and it's just been really effective on my acne. So love this, can't say enough about it. I also have discovered a new winning combo when it comes to doing my foundation. Um, so first I start with a Tarte Poreless Primer. This kind of mattifies my skin, really helps my foundation stay in place around my nose and T-zone area where I get very oily. This is an older product. I believe they have a newer packaging now, but they still do make this product from Tarte. It's a very good primer if you have oily skin and big pores. And then I was looking for a more affordable foundation that I could wear for work from home and for running errands. So I picked up an old favorite. I got this at Walmart. It was only six bucks. This is the best $6 foundation, like hands down. This beats 20, 30, $40 foundations like the Fenty Beauty one, Charlotte Tilbury, I'm looking at you. Um, and that's the CoverGirl Clean Matte Foundation. They don't have a ton of shades, which is a drawback of this foundation, but it's really affordable and it's really great if you have oily skin um, and you also want a medium to buildable full coverage. So I think this is a pretty good dupe for Estee Lauder Double Wear. It doesn't last quite as long, but for $6, it's a really good dupe. And it also doesn't offer quite the coverage of Double Wear, but again, it's very buildable. And I like it a lot for everyday wear. I also pair it with this Dermablend setting powder. This runs circles around the Maybelline Fit Me setting powder. I thought I liked that powder. I thought it did a decent job of locking in my makeup, but this locks in my makeup for hours and I really find if I use the primer and that foundation and this powder, my skin um, will not be oily for several hours, which is a big deal for me. <laughs> I used to be a chronic oil blotter, had to get those little like cleansing pads and blot my face a lot during the day, but this combination really, really works for me. Moving along into some hair care, um, I recently tried out the Brio Geo Superfoods Shampoo. This is only found at Ulta, um, and I had just really overlooked this product for years. But as I was getting my hair cut a couple weeks ago, I noticed it in the store, and I was really intrigued because it was a green shampoo. Green shampoos are usually clarifying. I have oily hair, um, so I decided to pick it up. And this shampoo is really gentle. It's one of the only shampoos I've ever had where I felt like I could go two days without washing my hair because typically I have to wash my hair every day. Otherwise my like roots and scalp just get very, very oily. So I have to say, if you have oily hair, this is a really good shampoo for you. It's gentle. It's not marketed as a clarifying shampoo. I would say it's just a gentle shampoo that's very cleansing. So if you have dry hair, I would stay away from this. But the one drawback of this is it doesn't have a good smell. In fact, it doesn't really have any smell at all. 
And that's really what I want in a shampoo. I want a shampoo that clarifies and cleanses my hair while being gentle, but I want it to have a good smell. The closest shampoo I found is the Way Shampoo for Fine Hair, but this shampoo is definitely more clarifying than that and better suited for oily hair, but the smell is not as good as Way. Conversely, I also did pick up this shampoo by Function of Beauty. It's for wavy hair, which I thought was really cool because as you can see, um, my hair is not really straight or curly. It has a wave to it. Um, so I thought this was really cool that they had shampoo specifically for wavy hair, but this shampoo is way too thick, way too heavy for my hair, makes my hair super greasy, and I'm going to have to give it to my mom or something because I'm not going to use it anymore. I don't like it. My hair just doesn't look good when I use this. So that was disappointing. I picked up this product as well, the Sparkling Soda Shine Mist by Drybar. I really wanted a product that eliminated frizz while also locking in the style of my hair, kind of similar to the Nexus, like Frizzify, um, like I think it's called Finishing Mist or something. I'll pop a picture of it here, but uh, this product is similar to that, but there's a couple main differences. It does eliminate frizz, but it doesn't lock in your style. I wish it was more of a firmer hairspray-like hold but it does smell really, really good. And it's kind of like a nice extra touch. So I like this product. I just wish it had more grip. And this product has been tried and true for me over the last few months. I've been using it pretty consistently since Christmas time. And that's the YSL Black Opium Perfume. This smells so sweet, so so seductive, kind of vanilla-y, flowery. It's just a very grown up and mature scent. It's definitely worth the hype. I love it so much. It's my favorite perfume and it has been for months. So I thought it deserved a shout out. I recently picked up this mascara from L'Oreal. It looks to be new and it's called the Voluminous Noir Balm. And it looks pretty similar to the original Voluminous Mascara from L'Oreal in Carbon Black. I like that mascara, but it just doesn't give me the volume that some other mascaras do. So I was really excited to try this out. And I have to say, I really like the brush. It really like separates your lashes. It still doesn't give me a ton of volume, but I definitely have to say that it is a quality drugstore mascara. So if you're looking for something affordable um, that really doesn't clump, I would definitely try checking this out. Um, I've been really satisfied with it so far. Do I think it's better than the Urban Decay Perversion Mascara? No, but is it a quality mascara? Yes. And then I picked this up per Tati's recommendation. Um, I just really can't watch a Tati video without buying something, so I, I try not to watch her videos too much, even though I love her. But this is the Maybelline Lifter Gloss, and I'm wearing it on my lips right now. Um, I think it just really does make your lips look juicy and kind of extra. It looks really good on a matte liquid lip. I don't think it lifts your lips really, like she also said that as well in her video, but it is just like a nice topper for the lip, and it's really affordable. And it's especially nice, I think, on a really drying matte liquid lip, like those by Smashbox or ColourPop. This is really nice to kind of add some moisture back into your lips. Moving on to fashion, I have been obsessed with these sort of Bottega dupes from Target. I love this purple one with the chain detail. They've all been like really discounted because I see that Target is kind of getting more springy ones in. Um, so consider picking one of these up if you like the look of this sort of like Bottega, or I think this one is more like shaped like the Prada shoulder bag. But I got this one in like this cream crocodile color. It was only $10.50 and it's really cute. And I just love these to kind of add some versatility to my bag collection. I also like getting some cheaper bags um, mixed in with some more expensive ones because I feel like if I take the cheaper one like out and it's raining or whatever, I don't care as much. So I feel like in the end, I actually use cheaper bags more than I use expensive ones. I also picked up this lunchbox from Target. It is super cute. At first, I wasn't obsessed with it, but I've gotten a ton of compliments on it going back to work. So if you're also looking for a new lunchbox as you return to the office, um, Target has a bunch of these um, in this like sort of purse-like shape. I opted for the gray and white um, and this just keeps your stuff like really cold it's nice and insulated it's also really big and i can easily fit like a big salad container in it a container of fruit snacks water like i can fit so much in here and i still have room so that was really attractive and it also came with 
three little clear containers, like Tupperware containers, and I thought that was a nice bonus. It was like $19.50 or something for the bag and three Tupperware containers, so you really cannot beat that. And this is the snack that I've been loving lately. It's the Hippies, and these are um, chickpea based corn puffs and they're so good. I love the nacho cheese flavor. The ingredients aren't too bad for like a processed snack. Um, they're made with chickpea flour, rice flour, sunflower oil, a couple other things, but the ingredient list isn't too long. They also have fiber, so they're filling and they're definitely like a lot better for you than eating like corn curls or potato chips. So if you like those like salty, crunchy snacks like that, but you wanna be healthy, you know, maybe mix this in or not. I mean, I still eat tons of potato chips, but that's just a fun new snack that I discovered that's healthy and it actually tastes good, unlike lar bars. Do not get me started on lar bars. I think they're disgusting. If you like lar bars, I don't know if I trust you. Moving on to the books that I have recently been reading. I've been reading a ton um, and I'm just gonna highlight two of my favorites. So I recently read The Couple Next Door by Sherry Lapina. That was a thriller, super, super fast paced. I read this book in like three sittings. I haven't read a book that captivated me so much in a really long time. And I saw this book recommended a lot on TikTok, but sometimes I'm skeptical of those recommendations. Like for example, I read The Last Mrs. Parrish, which is also really hyped up on TikTok. I didn't think that was that good. I almost didn't finish it. But this story was so good. If you like Gillian Flynn, if you like fast paced thrillers, like this is for you. This book was just insane. It was so good. Basically the premise is this couple um, their babysitter cancels and they leave their baby to go to this party next door and every like half hour or so they go back to their house and check on their baby and they have like baby monitors and whatever so they're like really watching their baby but their baby gets stolen in the middle of the night and so then obviously everyone is pointing fingers and is it the mom is it the dad is it someone unrelated to the family that's just trying to get the wife's family's money there's so many questions and it was just a really, really good fast paced plot. Um, another book that I really liked was The Maid by Nita Prose. And this story had everything that I wanted in a book. It was like a cutesy, cozy mystery, very light thriller vibes. Um, it was really voicey. It was like a voicey, cozy mystery. And the main character is a maid. She kind of has like autism or maybe some other like similar disorder. The author doesn't really say, but it's definitely like alluded to that she's a little bit different than other people. And as a result, I think that makes her a really lovable and unique character, very easy to empathize with. And she takes her job as a maid at a hotel very seriously. She's very into um, cleaning everything. She takes a lot of pride in it and she feels lucky to be a maid. And I thought that was a really interesting perspective. Um, but there's a lot of irony in the story and we kind of see that she's being set up for this crime that was committed at the hotel. She's going to be blamed for this wealthy man dying and the poor girl doesn't realize that and you just get very invested in her as a character and as a result the plot is also uh and you know as an added bonus I think the plot was really interesting too so it was a very good book as well so if you're looking for books to read, I would definitely recommend those too. I also love Macy Peters. Um, she is like an alternative pop artist and I believe she signed to Ed Sheeran's record label. She writes really good songs with really good words, kind of similar to Taylor Swift. Like she names the name of, of guys in her songs and I thought she was just a really talented writer and I also really like her groove and like the alternative vibes that she brings to music. So check her out if you want to look for a new artist to listen to. So that wraps up this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!